It's not always easy to be the younger brother. That's maybe the most important lesson Luigi learned in his life, because for nearly 20 years Luigi stood in Mario's shadow, waiting for his own game series, where he could show the world that he was far more than a green version of his fraternal twin brother. In Luigi's mansion, Luigi took his chance and now his early years are forgotten. Today Luigi is known for his famous special abilities, like his high jumps, his skills with a vacuum cleaner and his fearlessness, his complete and total fearlessness. But this is the story of Luigi's early years. The story of how the green plumber went from a simple Mario clone to become one of the most beloved game characters in the world. It's a story about brotherhood and self-assertion, about great and not so great games. It's the story of Luigi, a green plumber with a good heart. And it's the story of Daisy, the love of his life. So you ready? Let's do this. The story of Luigi began on the 14th of July 1983, the day when Luigi met his older fraternal twin brother Mario for the first time. Luigi was very proud of Mario. Proud because his twin brother was a rising video star in the 80s gaming business and proud because Mario seemed to really take care of his family. He even invited Luigi to join him in his brand new arcade game Mario Bros as a second player. Of course Luigi took this opportunity. To fight against sewer monsters in an arcade game was a really exciting experience for the green plumber, so Luigi was very pleased when Mario offered him the role of the second player in Super Mario Bros. two years later. To be honest, Luigi even dreamed to be on the cover of this classic game together with his brother. But when he saw that only Mario was on it, he was fine with it as well. Luigi was thankful to be in this great classic platformer at all. He supported his brother with all his might. After the release of Super Mario Bros, Luigi became a well-known gaming character, but his real breakthrough happened one year later with the release of Super Mario Bros. 2, The Lost Levels. In this game Luigi got his first character traits, high jumps and less ground friction. And more important, for the first time, Luigi was a playable character in the single player mode. Lost Levels had a Luigi game mode. Unfortunately, Lost Levels was, because of its high difficulty, only available in Japan, so Luigi had to wait for another game to convince the rest of the world of his skills. Luckily, he didn't have to wait long. In 1988, Nintendo released Super Mario Bros. 2, a side-scrolling platformer that included Luigi as one of four playable characters in the single-player mode. Now, a worldwide audience was able to see Luigi's high jumps and to notice his development from a simple Mario clone to the unique, talented, Finn game character we all know today. After Super Mario Bros. 2, Luigi expected to soon get his own game series. But instead of this, suddenly his career stagnated. It began with the release of Super Mario Bros. 3, one of the best NES games of all time. Not only was Mario on the cover all on his own for the fourth time, no, Luigi had been downgraded in this game from a playable character in the single player mode to the second player. And while Mario's career prospered more and more, Luigi noticed that the success went to Mario's head. Suddenly his brother did boxing games, he taught typing, he even told gamers that he was a real doctor. But the worst thing for Luigi was that his brother had forgotten him. Luigi, his younger fraternal twin brother. Why had Mario not invited Luigi for his first Game Boy Adventure, Super Mario Land? They could have had a great time together. And who knows, maybe Princess Daisy would have fallen in love with Luigi at the end. But instead of that, she kissed Mario. At least Luigi thought it was a kiss. Yes, it was a kiss. Why did Mario need another affair? It was obvious that he had no strong feelings for her. He already kissed Pauline and Peach. And even when Luigi overcame his jealousy, after Daisy became his caddy in NES Open Tournament Golf, he was still angry at Mario. If he had been a playable character in Super Mario Land, maybe he would have gotten a chance to kiss the sweet princess. And now, his only chance to win Daisy's heart was to score in a golf game. A nearly impossible mission, even if you're too under par. In Super Mario World, Luigi was once again only the second player. 
but that was not even the worst. The whole game seemed to confuse him with Mario as well. He started to think about his life. If Mario didn't want to do a game with him as a main character, maybe there were other people that would recognize his full potential. And so it came to be. In 1992, Luigi got a call from a gaming company called the Software Toolworks. This company offered him a main role in the newest game. Finally, Luigi did it. His first game started very exciting. The title screen promised a platform adventure in the style of Super Mario World and the first scene showed Luigi, Mario and Yoshi on a cold winter day in front of a castle when suddenly Mario fell through a trap. Now it was up to Luigi. The green plumber entered the castle. He chose one of the five red doors. He wondered why is there a town in the castle? Why isn't it winter in this town? What is going on here? Luigi ran through the streets confused. He talked to strangers and to Peach. And then slowly he realized that he had been trapped. Because this game wasn't an exciting platformer like Super Mario World. It was an educational game that tried to teach Luigi geography. And that wasn't even the worst thing about this game. The worst thing was its title. Mario is missing. Luigi's first game as main character was named Mario is missing. But even though the game had Mario's name on the cover, it mainly damaged Luigi's reputation. Every kid that bought this game was disappointed afterwards. Excellent in geography, but also very disappointed. And when kids don't trust you anymore, it means that your career is basically over. So the 90s became the hardest time in Luigi's life. Ten years after his first appearance, no one wanted to buy a game with the green plumber anymore. Even Mario distanced himself from Luigi and did Super Mario 64 on his own. This rejection got Luigi into a serious existential crisis, a crisis in which the green plumber lost nearly all of his spirit. During that time, he sometimes woke up and realized that it was already afternoon. Sometimes he didn't even have enough energy to brush his beard. And most of the time, he was lying on his bed, watching old scenes from his games. How he defeated Bowser. How he rode on Yoshi into the sunset. And always he and Daisy playing golf. But then one day Mario called and offered him a side role in his spin-off games. Even though Luigi was still angry at him, he knew that this was his last chance and that from now on he had to do better than he had ever done before. So Luigi changed his image. In Mario Kart 64 he showed gamers that he was not Mr. Nice Guy anymore. In Mario Party he expanded this image when he stayed cool in every situation, even when he was surrounded by boos. In Mario Golf he showed very strong emotions and in Mario Tennis he impressed the world and Daisy with his good stamina. So Luigi became a fearless gaming character with nearly never-ending stamina and the ability to express strong emotions. And fortunately for Luigi, that was exactly the kind of gaming character Nintendo was searching for at this time. For their GameCube launch title. Luigi got his second chance, but when the green plumber entered Luigi's mansion and noticed that Mario had been kidnapped again and that his first mission was to open this door, a great feeling of fear grew inside him. Was this another educational game? Were there hidden European cities behind this door? It was the only time in his life Luigi was really afraid. But of course, Luigi's Mansion was no educational game. Luigi's Mansion was a very unconventional action adventure inspired by Ghostbusters, where Luigi had to capture ghosts with a flashlight and a vacuum gear. And with its simple gameplay and its funny ideas, Luigi's Mansion became a huge success. So after two decades, Luigi finally escaped Mario's enormous shadow and became a unique and famous gaming star. And with his new self-confidence, Luigi confronted Mario and asked him why he hadn't invited him to Super Mario 64. 
Mario explained that at first he wanted to do this game with him, but then the programmers ran out of time and after Mario apologized for his selfish behavior in the 90s and asked if Luigi wanted to do new games with him as an equal partner, Luigi was no longer angry at Mario. So the twin brothers started a new series of role-playing games called Mario and Luigi with Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga for the Game Boy Advance. Together they made a new version of Super Mario 64 and the new Super Mario Bros for the Nintendo DS. And this time Luigi was on the cover of all three of these games. But even when Luigi didn't make it on the cover, like in Super Mario Galaxy or Super Mario 3D Land, he was still happy to be in these awesome Mario games again. Yes, since the release of Luigi's Mansion, things went pretty well for Luigi. So well, that Nintendo announced the time between March 2013 and March 2014 to be the year of Luigi. During these 12 months, the Japanese company celebrated the 30-year anniversary of the Green Plumber with the release of Mario and Luigi Dream Team for the Nintendo 3DS and the release of New Super Luigi U and the new Dr. Luigi for the Wii U. But the real the real highlight of the year of Luigi was the release of Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. So the story of Luigi is a story about failure and success, a story about brotherhood, self-assertion and bravery. But there is one last big question. Is the story of Luigi also a love story? Well, until today, Luigi and Daisy never stated that they are a couple. Maybe they are only too shy to make it public or maybe the rumors aren't true. We don't know for sure, but what we do know for sure is that Luigi isn't standing in Mario's shadow anymore and Daisy would be insane if she hasn't noticed that yet.